Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Hot Lead. This is published by Bitewing and designed by Reiner Knizia. All right, you guys, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. And if you like this video, give it a like, give it a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Also, this game, Hot Lead. I like to say it's Hot Lead because it's spelled the same way. But it's not Hot Lead. Or it's not Hot Lead. It's Hot <laughs> Lead. <laughs> I'm already confused myself. Hot Lead. Because... We are following these tips. We are trying to bust these five criminal activities using this different card play. Uh, and we are going undercover to bust them, trying to get the most amount of points. Let me show you how to play. So here's our setup for Hot Lead. We have our red deck, which is our criminal cards. We've got our blue deck, which is the investigator cards. We're basically going to shuffle them both up, and then we're ready to go. We're going to deal out 11 of these investigator cards to each player. We're going to play 10 rounds, and each round you're going to play one of those investigator cards. So you'll have one left over at the end. All right, so then we're going to flip over cards from this deck equal to the number of players. And they're going to be things like this. Criminal activities like fraud, car thief, cyber criminal, armed robbery, and money laundering. All right, so let's say we're playing a three-player game. We'll flip out three of these cards. Then each player is going to choose one card from their hand. All the numbers there at the top there. And basically what's going to happen is we're going to choose one of them and reveal it. How it's going to work is whoever has the the highest numbered card is going to get this card here at the very front of the line. Whoever has the next one gets that card. And whoever has the lowest card gets that one. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out what card you want. And you might try to figure out what everybody else at the table might want as well. And then try to play a card from your hand that matches that. So if you really want this four card, you might play like a 25 or, you know, a 27. Something in the middle of the deck. Whatever you have in your hand that's closest to that. If you don't want this one, you might play something with single digits to try to make sure you get that one. Let's say that we're okay with getting either one of these ones. Uh, so we play a, a 21, right? And then everybody else is going to throw their cards into the mix as well. We're going to reveal. So, all right. So there's a 23. We've got a 46 and we've got a 21. That's our card. So the 46 is automatically going to get that card. We'll play the 23 is going to get that one. We play the 21, so this is going to be our card. We're going to put that in front of us, in front of our tableau. That's how each round is going to go. It's super simple. Uh, where it starts getting interesting is about midway through the game, there starts to be some kind of uh, strategies that develop because you have people have more cards in front of them. There's a couple bonuses that occur that you really want to get. So first of all, as far as the scoring goes, the cards are worth whatever points are on the cards. This one's worth four, this one's worth five, this one's worth one. The first bonus in the game is if you are able to get exactly three of one type. So if you get, you know, these two money laundering in front of you, and now there's a third one out there, everyone at the table knows you're probably going to go for that money laundering card because it gets you that 10-point bonus, which can be really important. The other bonus is having one of each of those five colors of criminal activities. So if you're able to get one of each of those five, there's a 10-point bonus in it for you as well. So things start getting a little bit more interesting once you know people are trying to prevent or acquire those different bonuses, and your hand starts getting less and less you know options because you spent some of the cards that were in your hand. So at the end of the game, you're going to, again, total up all the numbers on your card. You'll get a 10-point bonus for three of a kinds, and you'll get a 10-point bonus for having uh, one of every type of color. And if you, all that, your score, whoever has the most points at the end of the game, wins. Now, there's also some extra things I would like to point out. There's some promotional tiles, which I think are great. These are kind of like halfway markers almost. These are worth five points apiece, and they're awarded to whoever gets two of something first. So if you're the first person to get to two of those armed robbery things, you're going to get an extra five points. You get to claim that tile immediately. So it's kind of a race to get to these when those are in the play, in the play which I definitely recommend. There's also some dead-end cards, <laughs> which are negatives. And there are some informer cards, which are positives. Those are some additional variant cards that you can shuffle into the deck. The way they're going to work is, let's say you are, you know, we kind of stack the deck here a little bit. Let's say you are flipping over cards, you reveal a dead end, you put that card on front of it. And same thing, you reveal a card, let's say this one came up first. Now things are a little bit different. This is worth a negative six. It's got a, a plus one on it. This has got a positive three plus its normal four. This one's now obviously worth a whole lot of points, but maybe this one rounds out one of those sets of three, or maybe it rounds out a set of, you know, one of each color. So it's worth getting that negative six points in order to make that happen. So adding those dead-end cards and those informer cards, as well as those promotional tiles, gives it an extra layer of intrigue and strategy to kind of plan for. But no matter what, when it's all said and done, whoever has the most points wins the game. Everybody, this game is quick. It is so fast. It is like super fast. And I think 
that this game is actually really great for people who struggle with AP um, analysis paralysis. I think that, I mean, there's no choices, right? There's not like, I mean, there are choices. There's choices, but there's like. There's choices, but you can't like stress over those. You're doing this or doing that. And I think if you have people in your gaming group that are like that, this is the perfect game to get in front of them, especially if you need like to warm up so you get to a game where they need to just get over that. Start with this one. And plus, you know, it's all simultaneous. So once the cards yes. are revealed, it you yeah. know, resolves itself it's super fast. Um, this is a really simple card game. And to do its credit, it's. It's really fun and simple, but also I would say uh, if you have those promotional tiles or if you have those extra variant cards, I would throw them in almost immediately. Play it one yeah. or two times just to get familiar. Throw them in right away. It, it you know it really adds to the game having those that little bit of extra decision making, that little bit of extra you know that point of, of do I want am I okay taking that negative? But I'm also you know making that'll that'll get to me to where I have a whole set of one of each yeah. or you know whatever the case is. So uh, and also that moment of like oh crap you know I was trying to get to that card but now I got oh, a negative yeah I got a negative five or whatever the case is. So I uh, I think getting those added in right away um, as soon as possible really makes the game shine. So I thought it was interesting how the high cards and the low cards aren't good or bad, right? Because there's some you want to win because you want the cards further up and there's some you're, you're you really, with the blue, yeah. the blue 1 through 55 cards. Exactly, yeah. So there's some that you want the first cards that are there and there's other ones you want the later cards. So I love how that's not good or bad and it really gets exciting towards the end of the game. So with like the first set, the first couple of rounds, right? There's nothing really bad unless you're adding the extra cards, but there's nothing really bad out there. You kind of want everything. But then as the game goes on, you know what other people are trying to get, you know, if they get the three of the kind or if they get five or a set of three or five and you can kind of work against that and you also want that. So it gets kind of exciting and that's when the low cards or the high cards really come into play and they're not good or bad. So I think I really like that. All right, so this is a pre-production copy. It's not the final artwork. However, I will say the artwork direction they're going, I really enjoy. It's got these anthropomorphized, uh, you know, police officers. <laughs> There's like a yeah. penguin on the back that just looks awesome. Yeah. It cracks me up, but also it fits the theme really well. Um, it kind of makes this idea of this criminal thing much more lighthearted. It matches the gameplay of the yeah. game. Yeah. Um, so again, not the final art. It might change slightly. Who knows? But the direction they're going, I'm a fan of. I think this is a great game to play, um, especially when you're like in between stuff. So if you're waiting for people to show up to something, this is the game that you want to get out. If you're waiting for people to finish the game so you can start a game with them, this is the game to get out. And and the one of the main reasons for that is because you can just play it over and over and over again, right? You don't get bored with it after multiple plays. So you can play it over again, whether it's like five minutes that you need to wait or if it's 15 minutes that you need to wait. Like this is a great span for that because you don't know how long that's going to be. The game is quick and you can just play it again. So it's great. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, this is a, a clever card game. It's a classic Knizia, you know, really simple rule set, but also clever, enjoyable, you know, decision points. Um, the scoring opportunities were fun, you know, the points themselves as well as, you know, getting the sets or the three of a kind, that kind of thing, and busting on that. Uh, I really enjoyed that part of it. Um, I love that really, the instantaneous re resolution, right? You're having that, that hand of cards, you're like, which one should I play? But as soon as you play it, you know, it just happens. You know, we yeah. just you assign the cards based off whatever the no numerical order is, which is fantastic. And frankly, it's just it's just good, simple fun. This is a, this is a fantastic, um, you know, opening opener or in between game as you're waiting for someone. Yeah, loved it. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. Until then, you can find us on Facebook, we're Ryan Bethany Board Game Reviews. On Twitter, we're Ryan and Bethany One, and on Instagram, we are Ryan and Bethany. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Nice. Bye, everybody.